everyone today we're looking at our stimuli of the week number one for week three the double stimulus if you would uh, we're going to look at breaking down this particular image see what information we can get out of it and how that can translate into an frq so the first thing i want to do is give a description of the space right and give me two different locations and they're pretty different from each other uh, so the first thing I want to do is identify what kind of place I'm looking at in the first picture, what kind of place I'm looking at in the second picture. For the first picture, I'm looking at what I'd call a rural space, and in the second, I'm looking at what I would call an urban space instead. Right? So that's one of the differences, right? So likely, if I get two stimuli, like I have here, where I have two pictures, uh, I'm going to be looking for similarities and for differences. So I want to start with that. I want to start by identifying the things that I see, the types of areas that I'm given with these pictures, um, and then go from there. So this is a rural space for sure, right? Um, but I'm also looking at things like, uh, I have like a canal here, right, in this place. All right, there's definitely a canal, right? Those are gonna be man-made, possibly. Man-made, human-made, man-made. Uh, aside from that, I also see what looks like farmland, or farm, right? I can kind of see a barn here. In the distance, barn, some fencing, uh, and I also see a windmill here too, right? In my urban space, I see a canal as well. It's not quite as uh, rough as the one that I have in the first picture, uh, but I still have a canal. This one definitely would be man-made for sure. Uh, aside from that, I can see I have a boat, right? Maybe, uh, and it looks like it's an electric boat or a motorboat. Uh, that's here in the water, right? And I also see buildings. They all kind of look similar. They're tall. Uh, maybe apartments uh, located next to each other, right? These buildings where we have these windows and then the housing and things like that, right? Uh, so what I want to look at, aside from that, I also see this tower. Right? There could be a church tower maybe, uh, but these are the for sure differences that I see. Right, the canals, the boats, the buildings, right, the, what we would call the landscape is different here. Right? Now, from here on out, I'm looking at the cultural landscape, because right? this is the culture unit. So I'm thinking about how these things reflect the cultural landscape and how the land itself may have contributed to the places looking like they do now. Now, as far as my rural area, for sure I'm going to need arable land. If I don't have arable land, I'm not going to have farms. But if I do have that arable land, that land that's good for farming, I'll be able to develop a farmland. Uh, I'll be able to develop farmland like I see here, and I'll be able to create these farm communities. Right? In my urban space, maybe I didn't have quite as much farmland available, and that's why I didn't focus on retaining this urban landscape or maintaining these, this rural landscape and instead developing an urban landscape instead. Right? Remember, rural are things uh, farther away from city centers. Uh, urbans, uh, urban areas are going to define what we usually think of as cities or towns or urban settlements where people are clustered together very closely uh, compared to rural settlements where people are more dispersed, more separate from each other. Now, aside from this, I want to look at the technology that I see in each of these. Right? And the boat is going to be a technology and that's going to be a product of canals, right? Water transportation as a mode of transportation. It looks like we've taken a pretty big chunk of the space to be used for these canals. Uh, here, this uh, canal that's been built may not be used for transportation like in the city. Uh, that canal might be used maybe for irrigation, right? To help water the crops uh, and help provide water to the crops and the farmland that are there. I also have a windmill here, right? And so it's usually going to be all right, in a windy area, right, it's used uh, for power, it's a form of power, it's an alternative form of power compared to electricity uh, or coal, natural gas, or any of the other conventional methods that we use, right, and so those are also uh, some things to note in these images, in these pictures. So what I want to think of now is how that cultural landscape uh, is formed by these things, and that's really just uh, developing these types of statements, right, so the arable land available made this area good for farming or productive for farming over time the landscape changed to contain more farmland and buildings suited or used 
suited for or used in agriculture. All right, that's kind of that physical landscape affecting the cultural landscape. Because the physical landscape is the arable land that's available, right? How the land was in the first place. And the cultural landscape is going to be the changes that happen after, right? How humans come in and modify the land to fit their needs. In this case, it's been modified to fit the farming needs of the community, right? To fit this uh, rural area so that the arable land is put to use. And as a result, we get this very unique image of this landscape, right? Where we have farmland, we have barns, we have fences, uh, we have windmills and things uh, to power uh, surrounding areas or this certain area. In my urban landscape, things are a little different, right? I'm urban, I have a canal, right? The lack of maybe available arable land led to this area maybe not being used for farmland. Instead, more and more people clustered together to form a town and eventually a city, right? Because this looks more like a city than just a regular town. Now we can tie this in too because we have lots of people moving to this area. It stands to reason that they got there somehow. And these canals provide a pretty good rationale for why it may have been easier to move into these places than into uh, the other surrounding it, right? This rural area is a little more hard to access, a little more difficult to access, right? It's going to be farther away from city centers and we may not have an ease of transport, right? Again, this may not be a transportation route per se. Uh, this may just be a way of irrigating the crops and the farmland. Here, we very clearly see that these canals have been made uh, for transportation purposes, have been transformed for transportation purposes, right? The canals, likely modified for boat transportation, allow for easy access, or rather easier access to travel because people want to come in and out of this urban area and trade, right, as these kind of trading posts uh, where people can come in and trade goods. And that leads you know, to economic opportunity and more people are going to be settled into this space uh, rather than not, right? Now, because of this and because of the technology that we're seeing, uh, that's going to affect the land use patterns that we see as well, right? So here in the urban space, we talked about the canals that are for sure man-made, right? They've been edited. We can see this concrete or these bricks uh, that are lining the canals. And likely they've been expanded. Uh, and they've been developed to accommodate boat transportation, right? So while, yes, we have the canals that have been modified for boat transportation, uh, the transportation part probably came first, right? So as transportation, transportation technology developed, there was an increased need to accommodate, and we can maybe say steamboats were the start, right? Because that's kind of the start of this new transportation uh, for waterways in particular, right? So the need to accommodate steamboats and riverboats people in this area, uh, maybe expanded canals or increased the width of the canals or made them wider. This made boat travel easier because more boats are going to be able to get through these wider spaces, right? So we're looking at kind of these two different ends of the landscape. We have the physical landscape itself, where maybe in the rural spaces, the one we have here in this first picture, we had a lot of arable land, which is really good for farming. So people just started naturally farming in that space. And maybe we didn't have as good, uh, we didn't have as developed of an access to that farmland, maybe a lack of arable land right in the urban space. So people didn't settle in there for farming, but they had other reasons for settling there instead. Maybe these used to be natural, completely natural waterways, and that was an easy way for people to travel to this place and trade. And over time, that led to more people settling in this area because then they could travel to other places in that space too. Eventually, we got new transportation, right? Before, maybe it's a wooden boat, uh, and you're using an oars or a paddle to power your way through. And now we have new technology that gets developed, like steamboats and river boats. And so you have to accommodate that new technology. The old canals maybe weren't big enough, weren't wide enough 
to accommodate these boats so we have easy travel. So we have to make changes to the landscape. We have to adjust the natural landscape. All that together changes what we call the cultural landscape, is kind of which is really the, the snapshot of these areas, which is uh, really just the pictures that we have here. Uh, so in looking at these spaces, the cultural landscape uh, is going to include the canals and the farmland and the windmill and how that space looks, how that space feels is going to make it different from the landscape of this urban space. Right? All of this together uh, and all of this that we're looking at is what we call sense of place, which is something like the unique characteristics and atmosphere of a location that make it distinct from other locations. It's the, the feeling you get when you walk into a place or when you're looking at a place uh, where it just feels so different than other areas. Here, the uniqueness that we see is this unique combination of canals and farms and windmills that create the sense of place for this first picture. In the second space, we still get canals, but we also have the steamboat technology and the architecture. We have all these buildings crowded into uh, single spaces, right into the same locations to accommodate larger populations, right? So we minimize the spread of housing and we kind of compact people together to fit more people in one area. And that sense of place for each of these two areas for the pictures uh, we're given is different and it's different for the reasons that we've described so far. Hopefully this was useful to you uh, looking at cultural landscape between our first stimuli of the week this double stimulus uh, that we have here. Next video we're going to look at the second stimuli of the week and then we'll uh, close that out for our Wednesday videos right to help you craft your self-created questions and to eventually answer your track B or track A questions too. Hoping you're happy, healthy, and safe. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.